Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Jackalopes of Fire podcast. This week, it's a video cast. I'm one of your hosts. I'm Chuck. With me as my sister, with me as always, is my sister, Priscilla. Say hi, Priscilla. Hey, y'all. Um, now, you still may be listening to just the audio. We are posting the audio portion of this um, like normal, but there is a video version of this. So you're either hearing us and seeing us or just hearing us. We encourage the the video, uh, but if you can't, if you don't have the option for video, by all means, li- listening to the audio is not a problem. Yeah, and uh, of course there is going to be a link to both on jackalopesfire.com. So if you stumbled on one and want the other, go there and work it out. Now we are recording this using the Google Plus Hangouts on Air functionality, so it's it's going to record and uh, post to YouTube automatically. I think that's very cool. Uh, but then you're going to grab it and do things with it, like right. magic and stuff. So anyway, yeah, um, and evidently Google Hangouts has changed and made things way more complicated than they need to be. Well, not really more complicated, just uh, it took a little longer to figure out how to get this part going. It's It used to be just this little button that was just right over there. You just started one, and you were off and running. But now, the, now there's an extra click involved that I wasn't aware of. Yeah, but we did finally get it up and running, and we have a lot to talk about today, so I'm going to jump right into it. Um First topic is, I don't know if you've heard about this, Chuck, um, because it actually didn't happen until last night. Um, Did probably not. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Christopher Titus um, asked his Twitter following, basically, if they would be interested in doing a kickstart for 13 more episodes of Titus. Um, I assume that they said yes and got the funding. Well, the response seems to be overwhelming um, because, like, ten minutes later he posted um, kickstarting it. Uh, That tweet has since been deleted. I think he may have jumped the gun because he didn't actually have the kickstarter thing up. And I haven't checked back today to see if he has it up, but it sounds like we may be getting some more episodes of Titus, possibly. Um, which I think would be kind of cool. I've been wanting that show to come back on the air, and Kickstarter seems like a great way to make it happen, given how Titus has been having his success lately. And then do a... um, It would have to be set up as like a 10 years later kind of thing. I wonder if... Well, that was the plan, um, because at one point, um, Christopher Titus was in negotiations. I don't know if it was with Fox or another network, but to bring in or to pick up Titus uh, again, and it would have been like 10 years later, him and his wife on the show are divorced, and basically taking the love is evil um, stand up and starting from that point. Right. He would have to change her name. That would throw people off. Was her name on the show the same? Yes, in, in the show, the, the character of Aaron, that's his wife's actual name. And when he did the, uh, I, don't, I don't know if it was Love is Evil or it, one of the episodes, he, or one of the specials, he actually mentions that he had to, he's had to change her name for legal reasons. Um, so he calls her a different name. And then even in the most recent one, he calls her by yet a third name. But Aaron is his is his wife's actual name, and that's I, the, I didn't know that was the character's yeah, name Cynth- too. Yeah, Cynthia Watros. That's her character's name in the show. Now they may be able to get away with it because it's a continuation of an existing um, show. It's not. It's based on real life, but it's not real. Yeah, it's so. a character's name. As long as it maybe if they don't use her maiden name or something. All right, maybe. Um, or or if the events don't match too closely to the to actual events. Either way, I think it would be great to have 13 more episodes of Titus. Uh, I think Kickstarter is a great way to make that happen. And it would be the first Kickstarter I would actually donate money to. (laughs) I, You know, I think Kickstarter is a great uh, idea, um, but it's it's hard for me to uh, talk myself into sharing my money 
to get something off the ground because I want my money to get to go to me, you know? No, I understand, which is why I generally don't support Kickstarter stuff. I'd give 20 bucks to tie this to make the show happen. Yeah. The interesting thing about Kickstarter, the, the thing I do like about Kickstarter is that if you pledge your money and it doesn't happen, then your money gets refunded. If they if they right. don't meet their goal, um, if they meet their goal, your money doesn't get refunded, but they're required to to produce. Um, the but if the money if they don't reach their goal, then the money gets it, it doesn't even get refunded. It never gets taken out from you because right. you're pledging it. So you're just saying yes, I'm going to do that. And if they reach their pledge goal, then the money gets taken. Yeah, it's a great idea um, for creative people to get their funding and. I think for for people who are trying to get into the business, whether it's making books or movies or music or whatever, I think Kickstarter is a great concept. Um, for someone who is um, already there, you know, like Titus, Titus is already fairly well established. And it seems to me that if he can't get it, get the funding in Hollywood, maybe this should just be let go. I don't know that it's even funding. I think he wants more creative control over it than a network would give him. That's also a possibility. But anyway, I, I don't know. We'll just have to wait anyway, and see. I, I'm, I'm hopeful. I think it's a great idea. I'll definitely keep an eye on the news for that one because that's that. If if they do it, then yes, I'll I'll want to see it. Um, moving on to, um, this is going to be brief. Mainly it's just a little, um, piece of information I happen to find funny. Um, so, as you may or may not know, tonight, because uh, we're recording this on Saturday as usual, tonight is the season finale of Doctor Who. You, would you, do you realize I, are not, do you believe that I am two weeks behind? That is rather shocking because I'm Extremely caught up. Extremely shocking. I did not watch last week's or the week before. I have them. They're ready to watch. But by the time it got around to like midweek, I was like, well, crap. I might as well just wait till Saturday, get all three, and then just watch them in, a, in one run. Well, then a the good thing is I'm not going to talk about any show content. That is not where this is going. Thank you. Um, that, was, we're, that, was, that was my subtle way of saying, don't say anything because I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to, we're, we're, because I suspect after we watch the season finale, we'll have a lot to say, so I don't want to talk about content yet anyway. Right. However, last weekend, um, it was um, in the news, or however, I read that, um, and I don't know which retailer did it or how it happened. I didn't care enough to dig that much into it. Just kind of laughed at it and moved on. Somehow, um, the box set of this season, uh, part two of this season, got sent out to some U.S. fans early. So Whoops. last, <laughs> so last week they had already seen the finale, and the Doctor Who Facebook basically posted on. Facebook saying, look, we know some of y'all got this early, so some of y'all have already seen the finale. Please don't post spoilers. Let oh, the other man. fans enjoy this. Wow. Right? Somebody's gonna get bitch slapped. Yeah. So some fans in the U.S. have already seen the finale as of last week. Wow. Yeah. That was just one of those things I thought was funny. That's just, I just, I'm just, I am, I'm, sh wow. That's quite, a, <laughs> that's quite an error, isn't that's, it? That's a huge fuck up. Uh-huh. I don't know how many people got it. I uh, did sound like it was contained to the U.S., so I assume it was a U.S. Re uh, retailer. Um, but beyond that, I don't know specifics. Oh man, I, I'm I I have to go look it up. I have to see where they came from. Uh, it doesn't say. Damn it. 
the BBC released the statement, but it doesn't really say what uh, retailer did it. And if I had to bet, I bet it was Amazon. You think so? Oh, yeah. That was kind of my first thought, too, but they're so big. Exactly. They're so big that these little mistakes happen actually quite frequently with Amazon. Um, there have been uh, not quite this. I haven't seen one quite this big, but I've seen people get like the uh, the Harry Potter books. Um, one of those, I think it was the fifth one, when it came out, It uh, the, the pre-orders, there were like, you know, a small percentage of pre-orders that got delivered like a week early. So there was a lot of people that that saw it before the stores got a chance to put it on sale. So, but yeah, it, it happens from time to time. Lucky fans. Very lucky. Um, readjusting here. Bear That's with fine. Me. The problem with doing it this way. Uh, anyway. See, that's so, yeah. why I like my setup is because I just have this stationary microphone. Or it's not stationary. It's on a boom. I can swing it around. But You're set up to do this a little easier than I am. Yes, I am. It's because I'm awesome. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sure. No, I totally am. So, um, next. I'm curious how they even got that. What do you mean? Well, I mean, how did they... Like, if I go to Amazon.com, I, there, there's still no release date for Series 7. I'm, I'm curious how that happened at all. Because usually if there's no release date, that means that even Amazon doesn't have them. Right. I don't so, know. So I'm curious how, like, they don't even have the, they don't even have the discs. Oh, well, that's what it is. Part 2 is scheduled to be released on May 28th. But the entire... Oh, man, are they not going to do the DVDs as one big box set? I don't think so. That's going to piss me off. I really don't want to have to buy two box sets. Nobody does. You know, I want I want all of Series 7 in one collection. That's actually a major complaint by a lot of fans right now. Yeah, I don't. I don't like the idea that they split the the seasons to begin with, um, and this is this now the second time that they pulled this. Uh, but to release it as two separate box sets would be pretty pretty shitty, in my opinion. But yeah, then that, then that, may, maybe they will. Uh, they will eventually release as one box set. They're just doing the the parts first. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. So, um, I don't know if you've heard, um, fall schedules are being released. Um, I did hear that we need to make a correction. What? NCIS Red did not get picked up. Yes, that NCIS Red did not get picked up. Yeah, I, I saw that this week. I was like, holy crap. They moved some stuff around. NCIS Red did not get picked up. And I finally saw they blurb about the next season of... Um, how I Met Your Mother, the entire season is going to be three days. It's going to be the weekend of the wedding. The whole season. Doesn't surprise me. I told you. I know. I just That just pisses me off. I would love... You know, I understand that the whole point of the story is that's How I Met Your Mother. Why not give us a year of their courtship? You know, have them meet her this you know, at the end of this season. I'm telling you, the last lines are going to be, and that's how I met your mother. Well, I know, but still. Um, it just kind of ticks me off. I, I, I would have liked to have seen a courtship type thing. So I do have the CBS schedule in front of me, and we're going to focus on CBS um, today. Well, I figure the best way to address this is a network a week. And okay. since I have a contact at CBS, that sent me a link directly to the CBS Upfront homepage. We're going to start there. You know that's cheating, right? Yep. Okay, just as long uh, as you're aware. TV.com has the same information. That's where I got all my stuff. Um, this site's now actually pretty official. cool because I got the schedule. I have trailers for the new shows, which I haven't actually sat down and watched. Uh, but anyway. Some of them look pretty good. Um, so Monday... It starts off with, again, How I Met Your Mother, 
then a new show called We Are Men, Two Broke Girls, and another new show called Mom, followed by, for part of the season, Hostages, and the other part of the season, Intelligence. Yeah, um, I've, I've seen trailers for some of this stuff. I haven't seen, I don't think I saw Intelligence. Hostages is going to be too dramatic, I think. You think so? Yeah, it's it's nothing but, well, it's not nothing, but it's basically it's this doctor who gets her family gets held hostage, and she is um, being coerced into killing the president of the United States. Ah, that's the that's the concept of at least the pilot episode, whether it's the whole season or not. I assume it's the whole season. Um, so it's going to be another one of those. It's all going to happen in a in a matter of a couple of days. Um, and I really don't like that trend, by the way. It started with 24, and I don't like that crap. Uh, anyway, um, the the We Are Men, Tony Shalhoub, Jerry O'Connell, and somebody else that I know. Um, oh, Cal, Cal Penn. Penn. Yeah, Cal Penn. These three guys and a fourth guy whom I don't recognize. I, I don't think I've ever seen him in anything, or at least he's a he's a he's really a no name an unknown type thing. Um, and it's a comedy about moving on after his uh, fiance leaves him at the altar for another guy. Um, eh, it doesn't look very funny, uh, but we'll probably give it a shot. And mom, uh, which is the new one from Chuck Lorre. Yes. Um, that one I am looking forward to because I like Anna Ferris anyway. Uh, she's going to be the primary character. Basically it's, it's her coping with first of all she's just she's sober she's been sober for like a year um and she's raising a daughter by herself and she's having to uh deal with her mother who is recently back in her life um so it's it's three generations of this particular family of women uh and it looks interesting it actually looks kind of funny and like i said it's anna ferris and in my opinion you can't really go wrong with anna ferris and then we have Tuesday night, uh, NCIS, NCIS Los Angeles, and Person of Interest. Um, no new shows there. Right. Uh, Person of Interest is on a new day. I, I will say that since they did not pick NCIS Red Up, this was a good idea. Moving the, you know, the, these are the top three shows for the whole week. And, and not just on CBS, but across the board. These are the top three. And so putting them all on one night that really locks in uh, CBS as the powerhouse for Tuesday nights. And with any luck, it's going to kill American Idol once and for all. Yeah, I don't see that happening. American Idol is too cheap to produce. Um, Wednesday we have No Changes, Survivor, Criminal Mind, CSI. Uh, Thursday we have The Big Bang Theory, followed by two new comedies, The Millers and The Crazy Ones, then Two and a Half Men at a New Time, and Elementary rounding out the night. Right. So, first of all, this is brilliant for CBS to put this by going to a two-hour block and bookending it with two known uh, winners with Two and a Half Men at the end and uh, The Big Bang Theory at the beginning. I think this is brilliant. Now, the crazy ones I'm looking forward to, this is the one with Robin Williams. Robin Williams and Sarah Michelle Gellar, you know, fa fans of Buffy. Um, I couldn't care less about her. In fact, if it... She almost makes me not want to watch it. I don't like her, but for Robin Williams, it's worth a shot. See, I, you know me, I do love Sarah Michelle Gellar, although I was very disappointed with her show, um, whatever the hell it was called. It wasn't good. It was so bad, I can't even remember what it was called. Um, it was on CW, so it was forgettable. Yeah, it's really not surprising. Um, but the, the nice thing about this particular role for her is that she gets to play the straight man to Robin Williams. And that's just that's magic right there. Uh, Robin Williams, I, I can't imagine how cool it would be to work with Robin Williams uh, and to have him coming back to TV. The I really, unless the writing on this show is completely abysmal, I can't imagine that it's going to fail. And since he pretty much just riffs on anything he does, even the writing probably wouldn't really make this show fail. If the writing sucks, he'll ad lib. I mean, yeah, exactly. Honestly, it's Robin Williams. Yeah, it's like okay, Robin, in this scene. You're gonna piss off your daughter. Go, uh, <laughs> you know it. They don't have to do much. Um, the uh, what was the the one after Big Bang Theory? Oh, the, the Millers. Millers. Yeah, that one. 
I'm not sure about yet. I saw the trailer for it. It looks interesting, but I don't know that it's going to make it. So we'll have to wait and see. That's if if any of the shows um, fail, it's going to be that one and We Are Men. Yeah. In my as far as the comedies go. Agreed. Uh, moving on to Friday, we have Undercover Boss, Hawaii Five O at a New Day and Time, and Blue Bloods. My feeling here is they must be trying to kill Hawaii Five O. They moved it from Monday to Friday, to the death I, night. I disagree because they also put it right next to Blue Bloods. Number one, this is the time slot that CSI New York has been in for years and has been successful. Um, they put it next to Blue so Bloods. So successful it got canceled. And eh, it's ending. I don't know that it, I don't know that they really said okay, you're not getting the ratings we want, or I think the producers were just ready to move on, and Gary probably is as well. But regardless, um, they're also putting it next to Blue Bloods, which uh, has been pulling pretty decent numbers, and Hawaii Five O gets its gets good enough numbers on Monday night, but it's having to fight Castle and on ABC and. Um, Oh crap! Something else. Uh, it was fighting Revolution on NBC, and it, that was hurting its numbers to an extent. So moving it to Friday night, I think is actually gonna. It may not help it, but I don't think it's gonna hurt it. I we'll don't see. think. I don't think it'll get canceled very quickly. Um, Saturday we have uh, an hour of comedy time, which essentially is just two comedies from earlier in the week they choose to repeat on Saturday. Um, followed by Crime Time Saturday, one of their dramas they're repeating from earlier in the week, and then 48 Hours. Yeah, they're not doing any real programming on Saturday nights. They're just re-airing crap. Right, except yeah. for 48 Hours. And it moves around throughout the season anyway. It, it could end up, it, like right now, it's on, it's on Friday nights right now. What? 48 Hours. It's been consistently on Saturday. They may be doing a second airing, but it's been on Saturdays. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Maybe they're doing a second airing on Friday nights. But anyway, um, Sunday nights? Sunday nights, of course, primetime starts an hour earlier, um, 6 Central, 7 Eastern with 60 Minutes, uh, followed by The Amazing Race, The Good Wife, and The Mentalist, exact same lineup as last year. Yep, which actually kind of irritates me. I hate that The Mentalist is on Sunday nights, but... You know, whatever. As long as it doesn't go off the air anytime soon, because it is another good show from CBS. Now, you'll notice that Mike and Molly is nowhere on that list. No, it will be a mid-season replacement. I suspect it's going to replace either We Are Men or The Millers. Exactly, and that's that's exactly how they're setting it up. It's they're it's getting a full order of 22 episodes, but they are half-hour episodes, so they can they can actually air them in chunks, like an hour of Mike and Molly. Um, and or air them through the off season or whatever. Um, so yeah, if one of the two new com or one of the new comedies uh, fails, then certainly Mike and Molly can take its place, um, or it can become a mid season replacement for something else. Right. So, um, but it's way. not canceled. Right. Yeah. That's that's one of the things I was like, oh my god, where's Mike and Molly? So I had to go and look that up. Um, anything else you have to add? Um, you know I. I I'm I'm interested in this is I like CBS's choices here for the most part, um, with the exception of some of the things that I think that they should have canceled and didn't, because it's time. I you know the Survivor. amazing race, yeah the amazing race and Survivor both need to go away. Agreed. Uh, you know, and as far as me, I I personally don't like The Good Wife or. Um, there's another one in that list, but anyway, um, I don't I don't like the Good Wife, but it's making them money, so I'm not gonna say well they should have canceled it. But I can't see how Survivor and The Amazing Race are still making money. Right? Why are people still watching this fucking show? People are morons. Yeah. So um, next week we'll hit up another network. So um, stay tuned for that. We'll do this once um, per episode until we get through all the networks. We're just going to do the majors? Yeah, because... CBS, NBC, on, ABC, and uh, CW. Oh, and Fox. Fox and CW. So five weeks worth of this. Yay! Yeah. I really don't want to try to tackle all five networks at once. Um, that's too much. So, moving on. I don't blame uh, you. It is, it is a lot to process in one, sh in one conversation. 
I don't know if anybody has seen my tweets on this, but I did tweet about it because I think it's freaking hilarious. Um, there is a website called has DC done something stupid today dot com. Yep. I and love it, this. Did you notice that the counter reset yesterday? I did. Did you see why it reset? Yeah, because uh, the guy who is behind the most popular book on the DC shelves walked. walked. He's going to finish up his current the book he's currently working on, and he's done. <laughs> Which means that somebody at DC, because like like three weeks ago, this guy was talking about a second Earth Two based book that he was going to be involved in. Yep. Um, and and we're not talking about because well technically, uh, World's Finest is sort of skirts both Earth Two and Earth Prime or whatever the it hell they're calling it. It connects them. Yeah, exactly. But um, this was going to be another book based in the Earth Two universe only, and uh, and now here we are three weeks later, and he says, "Fuck you guys, I'm going home." Uh, he Which kind of can't help but wonder what did Didio do? Yes, exactly. Somebody in, in the big office at DC pissed him off. It's most likely Dan Didio because that there are only a few people that have the kind of power uh, that could piss a writer off. Now it could be the direct editor of the book because the book has its own editor, and then Didio is you know uh, head honcho. Um, it could be the direct editor because that's what happened with Gail. Uh, her direct editor is the, was the problem there. Well, but he fired her. Right. This and is different. And backpedaled quickly. And <laughs> the thing here is, I would think if it was just this book, that he might still consider working on other DC titles. But he has made it clear that this means he is not working for DC. Period. Well, that's because this is the only book that he's working on currently with DC. And so by leaving this book, he's no longer working for DC. I think that that's the impression I got. That's, that's, that's the takeaway I got from that statement, is that because this is the only book I'm working on, I'm leaving DC. It's not be, I'm not leaving this book to go work on another title, is what he was trying to say there. Uh, I got the impression he wanted to make it clear he wanted nothing to do with DC. No, I think that just because of your uh, automatic hatred for all things DC and Dan Didio right now, that that was the impression you naturally pulled out of that. But I don't think that was what he was tr truly implied. Well, in either case, he isn't working on DC anymore. And honestly, I don't expect that he will if he walked off of a book this successful so suddenly. Right. Yeah, even and unless they figure out that the reason he walked was because of something that they did, and they fixed the problem, I don't expect to see him back. And I do blame Didio. Well, of course you do. Of course I do. Anyway, this is a real website. Um, have you read the backstory as to uh, why this site was created? I, I did not. I, I didn't go look at that. I just looked at the links going, okay, it's been this many days since the last fuck-up. Let's go see what the last fuck-up was and what the current fuck-up is. Yeah. That's all uh, I've done. The reason the site was created is it is connected to um, the outhousers.com, which is a comic-related website. And basically, DC, um, namely Didio, was upset because they were writing a lot of anti-DC articles or articles that weren't very flattering to the company. And so they basically threatened them and said, hey, if you don't stop writing these kinds of articles, we're going to stop giving you press passes and credentials. And so their response was not to suck up to Didio as some journalists would have. Instead, they basically went, fuck you, and created this website. <laughs> gotcha. Um, That's, you know, it's a healthy response. I think it's better than trying to suck up. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that's how this site came to be. I think it's great. It makes it really easy for me to find the crap that DC has done without having to look too hard. Uh, not that I ever really had to look too hard because it's so yeah. easy to find. I was going to say, it's not like you were having to dig. To be perfectly honest, I never looked. It just sort of found me. That's right. People would go, do you know what DC has done now? No, what have they done now? <laughs> Damn it, Didio. 
kind of how it went. Anyway, if you haven't checked it out, check it out. Has DC done something stupid today? Dot com. They also have a Twitter, um, which I follow because when the counter gets reset, they post it on Twitter. Click the link, go to the site, find out what the hell DC did now. So, there you go. Wow. I think it's great. No, I I completely agree. Uh, that's it. Regardless of your opinion of DC and Didio and everything else, it's a funny website. The the very slap in the face. Hey, look at what kind of bullshit DC's pulling now. That kind of thing. Um, it to me any any time that, that kind of humor comes up, I think it's great. I think it needs to be shared more often. I think it needs know. to go viral. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I got to tell you this story from work. So, it, it it it's I've been telling everybody this story. So we we're sitting at work the other day. Now, as many of you listeners and and now viewers know, I work in a call center environment, um, and. Um, uh, still, of course, also worked there for a while, but she's no longer uh, in the office with me anymore. I made uh, my escape. That's right. Uh, and, you know, and I'll say this before I get into my story. I miss having you there. I'm not going to lie. Of course you do. Duh. You know, I, I love you dearly, and, and being able to mess with you on a daily basis was part of the light of my life, and that's just not there anymore. So I have to save up all my... Um, uh, spunkiness. That that sounds dirty. Um, I have to save up my uh, my messing with you uh, f till we see each other on the weekends. See, I don't really miss you that much because I work in a room full of one year olds, and they remind me so much of you with their mentality. That I, it's like I you're there. Yeah, I completely get that. I I see that. That's that's easy to understand. Um. So anyway, on to my story. I work in a tel in a call center environment, and the guy who sits uh, behind and to my left, um, his name is Anthony. And Anthony gets a call uh, the other day from an individual named Steven Tyler. Um, and Steven Tyler needs a new printer uh, because his is dead. Uh, and that's that's part of what we do. We, we replace uh, hardware pieces. Anyway, um, so obviously... This part is the, uh, this part is a joke. He was telling us about this, and he says, "Yes, yeah, Stephen Tyler called. He needs a new printer." And I told Stephen Tyler to dream on. Now, this is funny because Stephen Tyler is, of course, the lead singer for Aerosmith. If you didn't know, and Aerosmith back in the seventies, I forget which year, but had an album called "Toys in the Attic" with a sound with a track on it called "Dream On." That's funny if you know these facts. Um. One of the these are facts of, I would expect everybody to know. Well, up to a certain age, anyway. Anyway, so one of our coworkers, uh, who shall remain nameless because I don't want to uh, embarrass her in case she ever sees this or anybody uh, else at work sees it and talks to her about it. Um, so I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say May's name. Um, she goes, "Who's Steven Tyler?" And after my aneurysm passed, I said, okay, Steven Tyler is Liv Tyler's father? Who's Liv Tyler? What? <laughs> she's young enough that, or not young enough, she's old enough that she should, I would think, know who the frick Liv Tyler is. Um, Liv Tyler, of course, Steven Tyler's daughter. She was in Armageddon. She was in the Lord of the Rings movies. Uh, she was in all those Aerosmith videos back in the day. You would think, but no, she doesn't know who either of these people are. So I did eventually tell her, okay, Steven Tyler is the lead singer for Aerosmith. She knows who Aerosmith is. She just didn't know who Steven Tyler was by name. Okay, fine. That was several days ago. We've moved on. I could hear the clock. <laughs> Sorry, we got distracted for a second. Uh... Scylla's sitting at her home. I'm sitting at mine. She has a clock up on the mantle. It's, a, it's an anniversary clock that chimes the hour. 
um, and it is coming up on a new hour. Anyway, um, so that was a couple days ago. Fine, moving on. Yesterday, I am uh, asking a question of one of my senior support agents. Um, the, they're the ones who, when, when I'm stumped, I go to them. And I was asking a question. I said, hey, I can't find this in, in the documentation, but is there a limit, blah, blah, blah. The answer is three. Um, there, there, there is a limit of three. Three is the number, and the number shall be three. That's, that's not exactly how it was worded, but it's pretty close. And my response to that was, so five is right out. <laughs> now, I don't expect a lot of people to get that, but it's a reference to Monty Python. Uh, it's uh, specifically Monty Python, the Holy Grail, and they're talking about the holy hand, gra hand grenade of Antioch in which you pull the pin, count to three, and throw. Um, and it says, you shall not uh, count two unless you then proceed on to three. You shall not count. You shall not count four. Five is right out. Uh, so anyway, it's it's a, it's a kind of a funny scene if you like that kind of humor. But the point is, the point to this whole story is that my coworker, who again she's remained nameless, so I'm not going to tell you May's name. Um, <laughs> she starts laughing, and I it didn't dawn on me that she was laughing at us. So I I happened I finished up the call I was on. I I went on break. I said, "What are you laughing about?" And she goes, "Monty Python." I'm like, "Really?" You get Monty Python, but you don't know who the fuck Steven Tyler is? You're so weird. I, just, I had to share that. That's, that's a whole story. Okay, moving on. Shut up. It was funny. <laughs> um, so, for the past couple of weeks, I've been talking about um, the relaunch Relaunch, not reboot. Relaunch of um, One Life to Live and All My Children. Um, previously, um, they were airing four episodes a week with a recap show on Friday. All seemed right with the world. My soaps were back. Something tells me that has changed. Well, <laughs> yes and no. Um, Thursday... I received the following press release um, from the online network uh, Prospect Park, makers of these shows. And I'm going to read the press release, um, not in its all entirety, but most of it, the important part. Uh, and then I'm going to tell you why this press release is bullshit, because it is. It starts... For close to two years, we have been working passionately to bring first-run premium content to an online platform with the creation of brand new versions of the two iconic series, All My Children and One Life to Live. There was no precedence for this effort. We had no history, no barometer for how our fans would respond. We always knew there would quickly be new insights into how audiences would respond to our shows in this new platform, and that our ability to adapt quickly to audiences needs would ultimately determine the long-term success of the shows and our mission. This is a new medium, a new time, and we have always planned to make changes quickly by listening to you, our fan and customers. Today, it is clear these shows have resonated as many millions of views have been logged since our April 29th debut, a mere two and a half weeks ago. We constantly have been in the top 10 shows viewed on Hulu and viewers and critics alike have told us how impressed they are with the quality of both programs. The past two weeks have been invaluable in terms of learning about how you watch and when you watch our shows on this new platform. We have gained enormous insight through our actual viewing data and our research. And our research has revealed the following. This is where it turns into bullshit. Um, bullet point number one. In the past, these shows had their vast majority of views within the first 24 hours. Instead, our shows are primarily consumed on different days than when they originally air. Primarily, fans have been binge viewing or watching on demand. As a result, we feel we have been expecting our audience to dedicate what has turned out to be an excessive amount of time to viewing these shows. As an example, for 
the substantial audience only watching on the weekends, we are currently asking them to watch five hours of programming to keep pace with our release schedule. Um, bullet point number two. On ABC, the shows shared a large percentage of their viewers with each other. Uh, yet the majority of our viewers are watching one show or the other, not both, and they aren't viewing the shows when they did before. Part of the reason for choosing between the shows may have been that the largest viewing takes place either between 12 and 1 p.m., when people generally can only fit one episode during lunchtime, or 5 and 7 p.m., when the vast majority of competing shows are a half hour long. We are finding that asking most people to regularly watch more than half an hour a day online seems to be too much. Um, so, my problem with that point, and I'm going to mention it now, they're saying that on ABC the show shared a large percentage of their viewers. That is not true, because One Life to Live had much higher ratings than All My Children. Yeah, that's, that's a large assumption that they're making. They're uh, trying to treat these as one show, and they're not. They have different audiences. Completely different, yeah. You may have some spillover, but you're not going to have the exact same audience. No soap opera shares its audience, with with the possible exception of Guiding Light and As the World Turns. Uh, I've, I've never seen any soap opera share the whole audience. And even with those two, um, As the World Turns always had higher ratings than Guiding Light. They did have a lot more spillover than a lot of soaps you see, but even their audience wasn't complete crossover. Right. Um, so that is just a bullshit statement in and of itself. Um, the last bullet point is, during their ABC run, viewers watched only two to three episodes on average a week and picked up with whichever day's episode it was. Our viewers seem to primarily start with the first episode and then continue forward episode by episode, like with primetime serialized dramas as opposed to the traditional slower pacing of daytime. People feel lost if they miss an episode. People are starting from the beginning. The shows are designed for complete viewing from episode one. Yet starting from the beginning with the amount of episodes we are releasing is asking too much for viewers who need to catch up. That's also bullshit because if this is going to be a long-term thing that's going to be um, like a soap opera genre, you're going to eventually get to the point where you can't start from day one. It's just the way it's going to be. Um, what these bullet points mean to continue the press release, quote, the clear conclusion is that while somewhat mixed, these viewing patterns resemble more closely the typical patterns of online viewing rather than w how one would watch traditional television. Duh. Um, yeah. <laughs> this leads us to believe we are posting too many episodes and making it too challenging for viewers to keep up. When it comes oh. to online viewing, most of us are just trying to find time to watch series comprised of 13 to 22 episodes. Um, blah, blah, blah. Let's get to the point. Here it is. Therefore, we have chosen to revise our scheduling model beginning this Monday, May 20th, by introducing two episodes from One Life to Live and All My Children each week. New episodes of All My Children will now run Mondays and Wednesdays, and fresh episodes of One Life to Live will post Tuesdays and Thursdays. More, our behind-the-scenes series will run as a single show on Fridays. That is this, so stupid. This allows us to introduce a new episode of quality television every day, Monday through Friday, and gives the audience a chance to catch up as we continue to build awareness and excitement, blah, 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 blah. And, and we I'm, don't have to start producing new episodes until much later than we expected. Therefore, we don't have to pay our production crew. We don't have to pay our cast. We want to be clear that this in no way impacts our feverish pace of production. We will be filming new episodes through mid-June, continuing editing through to ju July, and until we go back into production in August. It is a frantic schedule, but all of us are up to the challenge and excited to continue to deliver great shows. Okay, yes, they're still producing, but they're producing less, less shows. See, the, my so problem they're with cutting this... their schedule, they're cutting their production crew and cast time in half. Yes, and my biggest problem with this whole thing is they're assuming that a One Left to Live viewer is an All My Children viewer. So, and that is not the case. People are going to pick 
one or the other if they're going to pick one or the other. So now you're giving your audience two new shows a week, essentially an hour of programming a week where they were used to getting at first five. They've already had to accept that they're only getting two hours a week and now you're going to give them one? Well, okay, but you're right, it's an hour programming but it's two episodes yes it's, it's like watching two episodes of your favorite comedy every week uh, uh, for the prime time comparison um, so yeah it's cutting back but it's not it's not super severe it's not like they're cutting down to we're we're gonna go to one episode from each show a week um, I think it's stupid to have tried to release it the way they're doing it anyway. I think that they should have done just like Hulu, I mean not Hulu, uh, just like Netflix did with House of Cards and Hemlock Grove and just put out the entire chunk of, sh of season in one, uh, one shot. Wait until you've got, let's say, three months worth of show, okay? And then release it all at once. Now, if that means you know, what would have equated to four episodes uh, a week per show, that's fine. Put it all out there and let the people watch it at their pace while you go back and start making new episodes and then six months down the road, release the next set. Yeah, I like that idea. Um, in Canada, they're actually airing these episodes on the air, so I'm wondering how it's going to impact their viewing schedule. Right. Um and uh, I guess there's still talk about them maybe finding a cable station to pick up these episodes. But my biggest problem with the whole thing is their faulty assumption that One Life to Live and All My Children viewers are one and the same. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the start of the entire problem. They're, they're making a large assumption there that's just not true. A very untrue assumption. So... I have an issue with that, and the fact that they don't understand that, I don't feel bodes well for the shows, because they clearly don't understand their audience. Right. You ought to forgive me. It's time for me to readjust. Ha. <laughs> it happens. Yeah, I can only sit in one spot for so long. I dropped the notebook, so I didn't know where I was going next with this. <laughs> um <laughs> So, um. Ooh, you know what? This gives us a really good time for me to cut in. So, we've talked about my mic setup uh, before. Uh, you, yeah, but we've never done a video cast with the new mics. So, for those of you that haven't seen it, there's my, there's my mic on screen. You've got my pop filter that keeps me from spitting on the mic. And it's got a boom arm attached to it that I can move things around. Makes makes life a little more comfortable for me, and I keep trying to talk her into doing it too. But because of her unique setup at home, it's a little more difficult for her to do it there. And when she's over here recording, it's damn near impossible to have this kind of microphone set up. Yeah, I need to be a little more mobile than he is. Right. And he does not have a very mobile setup. No, I I record in one spot every time because mine is attached to a desk that is sitting next to my couch. And I'm sitting at the end of that couch. So moving on, have you heard about Angelina Jolie? I did. And this is, I, I just heard about this either yesterday or, fr or Thursday, one of the two. Um, uh, John actually mentioned it to me. Um, for those of you that don't know, she had a double mastectomy as a preventative measure because she has the gene that... Um, makes it highly likely that she will develop um, breast cancer. She also is going to have a hysterectomy and uh, have her ovaries removed so, to avoid ovarian cancer. Okay, so this is preventative. This is not in response to something. Right, this is preventative. Okay, John was mistaken on that. He, he thought that they had actually found something. No, she does not have cancer. This was purely preventative. Wow. Is she, I don't know if they've revealed this or not, uh, has she said anything about um, getting um, breast implants to replace what they, they took out? They mentioned reconstructive surgery, so I assume that's what that is. Yeah, that would be breast implants. Um, um, and she has had that. Okay. 
um, what started this was her mom died of breast cancer. Oh, okay. And so she got herself tested. There is a gene now. If you have this gene, it raises your chances of having the cancer. She does have the gene. Uh, so she didn't want to go through that. She didn't want to make her kids go through it. So she just did what she felt like she needed to do to prevent it. All right. Um, that's actually pretty smart. Um, you know, from a, from a health point of view, I think that's – if there's a high chance of you – getting this kind of disease and you can prevent it by taking what is an extreme step. Don't get me wrong. I, I do feel it's extreme, uh, but not uncalled for. But uh, and, extreme. Yeah, exactly. It, it, doing this is considerably less extreme than having to deal with actual cancer. Um, and uh, let's face it, by making that choice, she has removed the possibility that she's going to leave those poor orphan children alone with Brad. I tried to make a joke. It was funny in my head. Shut up. Anyway, um, I have nothing but respect for her, and I think that it's... Um, uh, brave's not really the right word, but I think it's speaks highly of her, the fact that she's, you know, gone public with her decision because it does start a dialogue with other women. Right. Um, it also heads off the inevitable uh, um, speculation that will happen when people start to realize that her boobs are fake. Yeah. Because up until now, they haven't been. She's She has been all natural. And there, there is a, a difference between all natural and fake, and people can tell these days quite easily. Oh, yeah. uh, so that it would have led to speculation. This, and I, I, I don't, I, I, I don't believe that that's the reason she did it, but I, I will say that that's going to be a result. It's going to head off that speculation. People know why she's done it, uh, right. and and like you said, it does. It starts a dialogue with other women out there. It encourages other women to go get that test and see if you have that gene, and then start making those hard decisions. And what's really making me mad is the haters out there. That Haters going to hate. Exactly. I think people need to leave her alone. This was a personal decision that she decided to come public with. Um, I think you need to respect her for what she did and respect the fact that it's her life and her decision and... The fact that she's in the public eye, she felt the need to be public with it and move on. I don't even understand where they're coming from. I, you know, why they're, you know, haters are going to hate. We all know that. Sometimes you can kind of see where they're coming from, whether you agree with it or not. You at least can sort of visualize their point of view. I can't even conceive of what's going on here it's like how are you going to belittle her for making this decision that could save her life this isn't like lisa renna and her fucking lips uh which i'm so glad that she has pulled back a bit <laughs> her lips were out of control and they're they're definitely better now um but you know it's not like that it's not like joan rivers and her constant of uh, uh refreshes um you know this, she's the only person that i know that's probably running windows 7 as part of her uh her body i, I swear she's got an onboard operating system um she's mostly robot by now right i mean you know anyway um this is completely different this is not plastic surgery to look beautiful. This is not, uh, this isn't even Angelina Jolie adopting another fucking kid, uh, you know, from a third world country. This is somebody who's in the public eye making a very hard decision and saving her life. A lot of people are upset that she went public with it because She's just doing it for the publicity or whatever. No, she's not. She understands the life that she leads and is just trying to, like you said, cut off the rumors before they start. Yeah, and and what's wrong with using her celebrity to um, get that dialogue started? I think that's great. And I, I certainly don't think she made this decision for publicity. I would so, hope not. 
I don't think so. I, I, I just can't imagine somebody would go, you know, I haven't been in the news enough lately. <laughs> Let's go get my boobs cut off. I, I don't I think did. anybody's going to come up with that. Especially not a... No. No. I, I think... The people need to leave her alone. This was had to be a tough decision that she made, but she did it for her kids so that she would be there to watch them grow up. Yeah. And I have nothing but respect for her. I completely agree. So, so you know, good luck hey. for good luck to Angelina Jolie. Good on you. Go ahead, move on. Yep. Yeah. And we are going to move on. Yep. Um. So I was reading Crack the other day. And I'm sorry, did you say you were smoking crack the other day? Reading cracked. Oh, cracked. Duh. The website. Duh, 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 duh. Cracked dot com. Duh. You were perusing cracked dot com. Yes. Dot and, com. Sorry. And there was an article. Um like I forget how many there were. Seven signs you're getting older, or six signs you're getting older, whatever. Um anyway, one of them was that slang annoys you. And I was overjoyed to read this because I thought I was the only one in the world that actually got infuriated by slang. And it turns out that I'm not. They're, even though they're just words, they're grading. And I was very pleased to know that there are other people that don't like slang or shortened words that don't need to be shortened, like adorbs for adorable. Yeah, they're yeah. I I get that. It's a uh, top five warning signs that you're finally getting older. Is okay. what it's actually called. There you go. Yeah. Um, I was just very pleased to know there are other people out there that are bothered by slang. Um, and there's a lot of slang words that just irk me. Um, and some are even used by like everyday words. Um, they've worked their way into uh, the everyday English language, and they still drive me nuts. Like hubby, ugh. Um, preggers, which is probably one of my biggest. Ugh. Really, um, hubby and preggers? Yes, I hate those. Um, yeah, at least those have been out for th those have been out there for a long time. It's the new ones that irritate me. It's adorbs like, yeah. does bother me. Yes, I hate adorbs. Um, have you watched uh, Happy Endings? No. Okay, there is a one of the characters on there does things like that. She has all these ridiculous slang and shortened words and mash words. It just drives me bonkers. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the point. I think that's the point of her character is to is to create these words to annoy people. Um, one of the ones mentioned in the article was cray cray. Yeah, I don't like cray cray. I use that, but not ever seriously. I'll use it in a mocking way when I'm messing with somebody or teasing them. Never seriously. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't like most slang words, actually. They drive me nuts. Um, I'm not a grammar Nazi, but I'm not that far off. <laughs> I, you know, I'm I'm certainly not a grammar Nazi, um, but you know, I'm all, like I said, I'm all, I'm really only irritated by the newer ones, the 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 ones that have shown up in the last five years or so. Yeah, um, see, I'm annoyed by them across the board. Even old school slang like groovy drives me nuts. I just can't talk to you seriously anymore. <laughs> How can you, especially groovy? That one, that one is the best slang of all time. What? Because, yeah, it's 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 ashes, man. It's it's from it's it's army of darkness. It's it's evil dead. You can't you can't not like groovy. That's one of Ash's catchphrases. Really? Yeah, he he has when he puts on the mechanical hand he does the fist with the thumbs up and groovy. Yeah. Well I guess it depends on context. I don't know. No, it it really doesn't. The word only works in one context, so you're just you're just a communist. That's all it is. <laughs> anyway, which is another word I don't like, commie. 
okay, that one's been around for 70 damn years. I mean, you just can't, you can't just go, no, I don't like that one anymore. <laughs> anyway, um, that was just a little point that I wanted to bring well, up. What would your grandfather think? I have no idea. There's just no telling. I didn't really uh, know him that well. Yeah. Grandpa Chuck would probably not appreciate it if you didn't like the, the term commie. <laughs> Grandpa Chuck was funny, but he had his opinions. Um, anyway. So, anyway, so I think it's time to go ahead and bust into our segments. Do, you Do we have... have to bust in? Can't we just slide in gently? We can slide in gently, but we got to get put in on there. A, put on a little uh, Barry White, maybe some, some scented candles. <laughs> okay. Bring, bring the house lights down low. Say, yeah, baby. Oh, I'm the love master, baby. I stole your drink from here. That's okay, baby. I'm only three inches from the ground. Sorry. <laughs> because oh, what's, of a... what's that, baby? You just graduated college. I'm going to make your magnum come loudly. <laughs> Sorry. All right, I'll quit. I'll quit doing the Love Master. Uh, if y'all have not seen the Love Master, um, find... Uh, I can't think of the comedian's name. He's a comedian. His name is Craig Shoemaker. Craig Shoemaker, and he has a bit called The Love Master. Go to YouTube, look it up. It's so funny. Oh, my God. You will you will die. So we can't do sound effects because of the video casting part of this. Right. We haven't figured out how to incorporate proper sound effects into our video cast. So we're just going to get right into the segments. Um, do you have a Chuck's Choice for the week? I actually do. Uh, and and so if you if you want, I'll go ahead and start. Um, Chuck's Choice this week is a book that was just released this past Tuesday, written by Dan Brown, same guy who wrote Angels and Demons and The Da Vinci Code um, and The Lost Symbol. This is now the fourth book starring the character of Robert Langdon, that same character from Da Vinci Code and Angels and, De Angels and Demons. If you've seen those movies, you know the character. It's Tom Hanks' character. Um, so this is now the fourth book, and, again, and it's called Inferno. And it's... Um, Basically, it's obviously it's Langdon uh, trying to save the world, um, and he's running around Florence, Italy, using clues from Dante uh, Dante Alighieri's uh, epic um, Inferno. Uh, if if you don't know Dante Alighieri, it's uh, the Divine Comedy. Uh, basically, there's Inferno. Um, I forget the, it's it's a three stage epic. Uh, uh, epic uh, journey. Basically, it's Dante having a dream about going through hell and, and on into paradise. But anyway, um, so the book's called Inferno, and it's using clues from the Divine Comedy to save the world. Uh, I'm, I'm about halfway through it right now, and it's actually really good. Uh, I've been reading it at work. Um, so, you know, if you like those kind of, if you liked Angels and Demons and Da Vinci Code, if you like the movies, you'll probably like the books. Go check it out. Just got released this week. Dan Brown's Inferno. Okay. Um, moving on to my soapbox. This week, I would like to address Abercrombie and Fitch. Fuck Abercrombie and Fitch. And their, and their owner. Yes. Um, for those Sorry. of you that <laughs> haven't heard, they released a statement, or a statement was made by the CEO that said, and I quote... Candidly, we go after the cool kids. We go after the attractive all-American kid with a great attitude and lots of friends. A lot of people don't belong in our clothes, and they can't belong. End quote. Yep. We don't like fat and ugly people. Don't shop in our stores. That's basically their response to why they don't have plus-size clothing in their stores. Right. Um, Ellen DeGeneres ripped on them on her show, because Ellen is awesome. And basically her response, in short, was since when did plus size become size 10 and above? Because it's not like Abercrombie has a wide array of sizes, you know. Um, no, yeah, if you're not a skinny bitch, you're not going to be wearing their clothes. And she went on um, to um, say she knows that a lot of kids watch her show and reiterated that beauty is not on the outside that however you are 
appearance wise you're beautiful and I thought she she expressed it much better than I just did um, but she was very eloquent in her opening monologue um, when she addressed it, addressed this now I have never liked Abercrombie I've never been a fan I think their stores stink personally like seriously if you just walk by the doorway in the mall it's this unique aroma that is very unpleasant That's just yeah it hits you kind of like a ton of bricks yeah it's not a pleasant odor so I wouldn't want to shop there um, the Abercrombie clothes that I have seen I wouldn't want them in my size because I don't really like their clothes anyway so that's not the point um, I think and, and if they don't want to carry plus size clothes that is completely their prerogative it's their company the way they addressed it was completely uncalled for and insulting yeah I mean how hard would it have been to go you know we we just don't want to we are not don't want to how hard would it have been for them to go we can't cater to everybody we have chosen our niche audience or niche um, uh, retail buyer, and not everybody fits into that mold. Sorry. Don't, don't be but, a dick about it, though. But to say a lot of people don't belong in our clothes and they can't belong, who the right. fuck are you? Yeah, that's that's entirely different. That's 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 just being a douchebag for the sake of being a douchebag. Uh-huh. Um. You know, it's acceptable to point out that this is our audience. Um, there are other stores that cater to a specific audience, such as Torrid, Lane Bryant. Those are exclusively plus-size stores. Um, it's okay to cater to a segment of the population, but try to do it without insulting the rest of the population. Um, unfortunately, I don't think this is going to hurt their sales. Um, teenagers are idiots, and they don't really care about social issues as long as they're popular. Now, I would like to say, uh, this is, and I, I realize that sounds like I'm about to defend him. I'm not at all. The CEO of Abercrombie and Fitch, his name is Mike Jeffries. The audacity of this man to say certain people don't fit the mold and and never will when he's as ugly as fucking sin. I mean, this whole thing that he's got going on on his face it looks like somebody took a like a a cast iron frying pan and just smacked him in the face repeatedly. And just flattened it. He's had he's had work done to make him. Uh, he's he's all stretched. And, oh, it's, he's ugly. He's fucking ugly. Yes, he's small. He's considerably uh, thinner than I am. Um, but he's ugly. And so for his the audacity of this son of a bitch to uh, weigh in on the the people that should and should not wear his clothes. He needs to shut the fuck up. Oh, I hadn't really looked at a picture of him till now. You're right. Yeah, he's fucking ugly. Oh my god, he is. Yeah, that's the guy. That's the guy that said that. He's oh. fucking ugly. <laughs> he is. Yeah. Pot, I just thought I'd share that. Don't call the kettle black. Wow. Um. I love it. If you if you look around, you'll find. Pictures comparing him to the old Biff Tannen from the uh, uh, from the end of Back to the Future. <laughs> the, I can the, the one that. that the one that's polishing Marty's truck. Yeah. Anyway, I think that it was completely uncalled for. I think it was insulting, and I think that teenagers and especially girls in this country have enough problems with body image as it is without douchebags like that adding to it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, not, I'm not saying that it's okay to be overweight. I mean, for health reasons, of course, you should try to be healthy, but I don't think it does any good to... I mean, Abercrombie's clothes go from a size zero, zero to like eight. Yeah. Yeah, they... Uh, yeah. 
you know, there are a lot of people important. that are there's a lot of people that are healthy at a size 10, 12. Right. Um, it's that is not overweight. That okay. is what we call healthy in the real world. If you're gonna if you're gonna lose weight, do it for health reasons. Uh, be healthy. Don't do it for image reasons because if if you're doing it for image reasons, even when you get down to the quote unquote perfect size, uh, you're still not going to be happy with the result. No. You have to you have to love yourself regardless of who you are and what you look like, um, and then get healthy. And if you're fitting into a size zero zero, that is double zero. Eat eight pizza, <laughs> and maybe eat some donuts while you're at it. Nobody should be that small. I'm sorry. Nobody should be that small. Yeah, that's I've, that's that's scary. I've seen a double zero. Nobody should be that small as an adult. Yeah. Eat a freaking pizza. Just saying. And so yeah. Um, Abercrombie is run by an idiot, an asshole idiot douche. Yep. And that's my soapbox. Yay. Um, moving on, Flix Picks. You know, I'm just going to say this. You would think that if you're adding things from your list that are remakes of something, or have a remake out there, if both versions are available on Netflix, when it does the because you added this movie, shouldn't the other version also be in that list? Not necessarily. For example, I just added Footloose, because both versions of Footloose are actually on Netflix right now. And I just added Footloose to my InstaQ because I love the Kevin Bacon Footloose. I would have thought that the new version would also be, hey, because you added that, maybe you'll like this one too. That was just, it just shocked me that it didn't do that. Okay. So, Flix Picks, uh, Footloose. Uh, <laughs> the, the original Kevin Bacon Footloose is available on Netflix. Uh, if you've never seen it, my God, go and watch it. If you have seen it, my God, go and watch it again. It's a great movie. Uh, it's, it's an all time classic, uh, you know, and it, it's so good that they made a, uh, they they did it again, and the remake's not bad either. Uh, so go watch either one. Go watch them both. I don't care. Go watch Footloose. Um, you've also got Dirty Dancing, uh, which if you haven't seen Dirty Dancing, you, you need You took help. one of my picks. Did I take one of your picks? I'm sorry. Dirty Dancing is awesome, and so we both love it. So go watch that as well. Um and I'm going to redo one. I know that I this isn't this wasn't all that long ago. I mentioned this, um, Hemlock Grove. I I told you before it even hit that it's going to be good. You need to go see it. I have finished watching it. Uh, the the the, th the thirteen episodes for the current season have all posted. They're there. Go watch this show. It'll have you scratching your head right up until the end. It's a it is a it is a dark, strange story. Um, and it'll it'll have you guessing all the way up till the end. It's very good. Um, and there, that little final scene that sets up the next season makes you go, "Oh, I can't wait." <laughs> so yeah, go go check that out. So Footloose, Dirty Dancing, and uh, uh, Hemlock Grove. It's okay. I actually just came up with another pick. Um, although yes, go watch Dirty Dancing. <laughs> Um, I, has that ever happened? That's never happened, has it? Nope. Wow. Um, so my first pick is uh, Tomb Raider. It's the theatrical movie starring Angelina Jolie as Laura Croft. Speaking of. Yes. Uh, I think that Angelina made an awesome Laura Croft. It was okay. It wasn't, it wasn't terrible. Uh, I liked her in Gone in 60 Seconds better, but... Um, I thought she did good as Laura Croft. Now, my perspective on this movie is as someone that doesn't play the video games. I only knew about Laura Croft from pop culture, not from playing the games themselves. So, as far as how it is as an adaptation of the game, I can't say. As an action movie, I enjoyed it. 
Well, now, to be fair, it's not an adaptation of any of the games. It's simply an adaptation of the character. It's, okay. It is its own story. Um, it is, it's a good story, and it fits well within the character's mythos. And so it's, it's a good movie. I enjoyed it. I think you should check it out. Yeah. Um, next, Brokeback Mountain. If, if you haven't seen this, it is worth a watch. It's got um, Jake uh, Gyllenhaal and Heath Ledger. If you've never heard obviously, of this movie... Obviously before Heath died. Uh, yeah, obviously. Um, it's also got Anne Hathaway and Michelle Williams. Um, if you've never heard of this movie, Crawl Out From Under Your Rock, because it was all over the place when it came out. Um, if you haven't seen it, it is worth watching. And my last pick is A League of Their Own, which... To me, it's just a classic movie. Almost anything with Tom Hanks. That's some yeah. good stuff right there. And this is one of the best ones. And this has Tom Hanks, Gina Davis, Madonna, Rosie O'Donnell. Um, the list goes on. Yeah, the list goes um, on. It's directed by Penny Marshall. Uh, it's got a cameo by, well, not a cameo, but it's got a small part by Gary Marshall, her brother. Amazing movie. If you've never seen this, you need to watch it. And if you have, it's time to watch it again. Yeah, it's it is it's a great movie. It's it's a good, it's a heartwarming film. It's a great baseball film. Um, it's a great historical record uh, type of film. Um, it's, it's a great uh, women's it, rights film. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, it, it's it's just all around. It it hits the mark on every level. Great direction, great cast, great acting, great plot, great uh, dialogue. It's one of the best movies to have come out of the last century. And um, both Tom Hanks and Gina Davis are just brilliant in it. Yeah, absolutely. So um, those are right so, picks. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with that. Good job on you. Um, what was I going to say? Something popped into my head and I've forgotten what it was. Crap balls. Son of a bitch. Go ahead. I, I forgot what I was going to say. I, I was just going to ra start wrapping things up and leave everybody with a question to kind of ponder. If you feel like expressing your feedback, you can do so on Twitter, Facebook, um, email us, or just ponder it to yourself. Um, but here is the question. What makes something funny? And I asked this because, again, I was reading an article on Craft.com, and one of the articles, and actually I think I've seen this specific point on multiple articles because um, they do a lot of articles on stand-up comedy. Um, I just remembered what I was going to talk about, but go ahead. Um, they tend to act as if, what makes something funny is unexpected, and if you see it coming, it can't be funny. I don't think that's true. There's a lot of jokes that I see the ending coming from a mile away, and it's still funny as hell. Yeah. I, th when when comedy surprises you, it's funnier. It can still be funny and not surprising at all. You could uh, there, there are jokes out there that are completely transparent. You see the punchline coming, and you still can't help but laugh. It's the but same when, reason you can watch the same stand-up comics, same special, ten times and still laugh. Right, but you don't laugh as hard. Once no, you've but seen it the first time and you know the jokes that are coming, it's not as funny, but it's still funny. So, with that in mind, what makes something funny? Well, uh, funny can be... Funny, funny is... A personal thing you know a lot of people agree on something is funny but for different reasons um, surprising you with humor makes that humor go over better but that doesn't make it funny to begin with it has to be funny for it to for it to work you know I could sit here and tell lame jokes all day that you're not expecting at all if they're lame you still don't laugh Exactly. And I've actually given this a lot of thought. Every time I've laughed for the past 48 hours or so, I've actually stopped, why was that funny? I can't come up with an answer. 
that you know there you can't always sometimes funny just is um you know it can be something simple like a um a a pratfall like you and your friends are walking down the street and you see somebody no not you cuz you don't have friends um yes i do terrible sorry <laughs> I, I, Lord, I apologize. But anyway, um, you're walking down the street and y'all see somebody fall over. Once you've ascertained that he or she is okay, you laugh because it's funny. You don't know why. It just it's funny when somebody else gets hurt or falls down or whatever. Um, so you know that you know it's it's an ethereal thing. You can't really define why it's funny. You just know it is. It's kind. Of like when I have a joke in my head, I know it's funny, and then I say it out loud, and huh, I was wrong. Fair so, enough. I can give so, you examples of things that are that are funny, without any real explanation as to why. For example, so I was watching Scream. This is what I was going to say. See how I segued this? I watched all four Scream movies this oh, week. Oh, you finally saw the fourth one. I finally saw the fourth one. And let me tell you, the ending surprised the hell out of me. Um, I, but only halfway. I knew one of them. I wasn't expecting the other. Anyway, right. um, well, so it was good, though, right? It was good. They they did a good job, especially considering what it was meant to be. I, I think it, I think they did a really good job. So good on good on the writers and producers, and certainly Wes Craven for delivering. Uh, and it was cool to see all the actors back. Um, I did find it interesting. I, I will just as an aside uh, in the credits, they actually gave Heather Graham credit for her role as the movie version of Casey from the second Scream movie. Because it was the movie within a movie that's at the beginning of, of, of Scream 2. They were showing that clip again. And they actually credited her in the credits for Scream 4 for that role. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, but anyway, moving on. So I watched all four movies. The What struck me as funny in the first movie was the principal. The principal in the first movie is played by Henry Winkler, who of course played the Fonz on Happy Days. I guess that never occurred to me when I was watching Scary Movie. Uh, Scary Movie, of course, being the spoof of the Scream franchise, um, among other things. Uh, but primarily it was a Scream spoof. Um, and the principal, Principal Squigman, who is played by, and I forget the actor's name, but the guy who played Squiggy on Laverne and Shirley. Laverne and Shirley is a spinoff of Happy Days. That's funny. That's one of those subtle little things that only some people are going to get. and that That's funny shit right there. Oh, also, uh, Wes Craven's in the first film. He's the janitor. When the principal comes out and he sees the janitor named Fred in the hallway, that's Wes Craven with a wig and a dirty brown hat and a red and green sweater. He's clearly supposed to be Freddy Krueger. That's hilarious. Right. That is funny. Yeah. It's kind of like that... Oh, my God, I'm blanking out on the comedian's name. Well, while you blank out, I was just the... going to say as a finish-up, if y'all haven't seen the fourth Scream movie, watch all four in one shot. It's very cool to watch. Yeah, Andy Kaufman. Oh, Kaufman, yeah. He had the, some the, just weird, the funny Mouse, stuff. The Mighty Mouse bit. Yep. There's no reason that should be funny. It should be roll your eyes and not laugh. You but, should be groaning. It's so bad. But, but it's, it's hilarious. hilarious. Yep, For absolutely. no reason. Absolutely. It's funny. Even though it's expected at this point, you know what it is. When you watch it again, it's still funny. You know, and... Um, if if you've never seen it, the, the, one of the best bits of funny television ever is Richard Pryor hosting Saturday Night Live back in the back in 1975. Uh, it was the I it wasn't the first episode, but it was one of the first couple of episodes. You can probably find it on um, it, Netflix. Because it is. It has a lot of the SNL stuff. Yeah, all those are on Netflix right now, and so you can find this episode. And again, it's the one that Richard Pryor hosted. Uh, there is a scene with him uh, in an office doing an interview with Chevy Chase. Chevy is hiring. Richard is uh, applying for the janitorial position, and they they're doing a, a word association. And Chevy is throwing out these 
uh, these racial uh, slurs and getting a reaction from Richard and you know it's things that that are just today are just horrendous thing and I'm gonna repeat them but don't be please don't be offended I'm just repeating uh, things like porch monkey and jungle bummy and spear chucker and the the infamous inward which I'm not even gonna say that one I it that one I hate I, I don't like anybody using it I don't like people I don't, not even not even in rap Stop using that word. Anyway. Um, yeah, just because you're black does not give you an excuse to use that word. Yeah, that just is saying. just a vicious word that should never be uttered ever again. But anyway, um, and at one point, you know, Richard's reaction is it, it goes for it starts with honky and, you know, because it's word association. And then the next one, it's honky honky. I don't know why he just repeats honky, but it, he does. Uh, and then when he gets to the, when Chevy gets to the N word, Richard looks at him with this death glare and says, "Dead honky," and it is hilarious. And it, and it doesn't matter how many times I've seen it, I still have to stop it so I can laugh because it is that damn funny. Uh, the first time I ever saw it, you you have that little, "Did they just really do that?" And then I fell off the couch laughing. Um, cause it, it's that funny, you know, it, there is no explanation. It just is, uh, it, Monty Python's another one of those things. I love Monty Python. It's so funny. Dead Some parrot sketch. It. The dead parrot sketch. It should not funny. be funny. It shouldn't be. It should be completely ridiculous, but yet you laugh, you know, and it's just, it's one of those things. One of the greatest jokes I've ever heard of a stand up comedian didn't get a lot of laughter the first time he ever said it. Uh, and to me, it's one of the funniest things ever said. Uh, in fact, uh, it's Mitch Hedberg. Uh, when he was recording his Comedy Central uh, special all those years ago, of course, Mitch has passed on, uh, but when he was recording his special, um, he did the joke about uh, playing the stereo too loud. The crowd didn't laugh. They, he got a couple of chuckles, but when they aired it, they had tweaked the audience response to where the laugh they took – part of the laughter from the end of the show and dubbed it after that joke so that it would seem that the crowd loved it. Um, I think that's very tricky. They should not have done that. But anyway, um, I love the joke. I think it's hilarious. And base, it's it's very basic. It's just, you know, when I'm at home listening to my music, I like to listen to my music loud. My neighbor doesn't like that, so he bangs on the wall. And I know he's trying to tell me to turn the music down. But when he starts banging on the wall, I tell him to go around. I cannot open the wall. I don't know what you got on your side, but there is no door over here. <laughs> That's just, see, even you, you're laughing. That's funny, and I'm not even delivering it great. But he, de thing, he delivers it in such a way that it's just, it's fucking hilarious. Honestly, Mitch Hedberg, who I now, as an adult, love, um, you introduced me to him in my late teen, early 20s. Yeah, your stupid years, I like to call them. Um, no, that was from 14 to 18. No, that um, was from about 14 to how old are you now? Oh, 32. Anyway. Which means you um, still got a couple to go. <laughs> I didn't get his uh, comedy at the time. Um, unfortunately, I didn't appreciate him when he was alive. Um, since his passing, really within the last couple of years or so, I've come to really find his style of comedy funny. But he does have a unique style that not everybody gets. Right. Yes, he does. Or did. He, unfortunately. Yeah, he, uh, yes, he did have a. Yeah, he has passed away. He. Um. There actually died of heart is. Problems. Yeah, there actually is a Mitch Hedberg Twitter account. I don't know who runs it. Obviously, it's not him. But whoever runs it, um, tweets a lot of the same one-liner type things that he used in his stand-up. Um, and it's actually quite funny. I know that his wife, fiance, whatever she was, has all of his old notebooks of stuff that he had not yet released, um, and they were talking about releasing those in a book. Uh, it could be that she's doing that through Twitter instead. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's her or if it's just a hardcore fan. Um, yeah, that, that could also be. But whoever it is is very funny and stays true to his style of comedy. I can hear those tweets in his voice, and he had a unique voice. Yeah. So, so anyway, the, we've gone on and on about it. So, like, you know, if you have a, an idea of what makes funny funny, 
let us know. And and if you've got other examples of things that should not be funny but are, by all means, share them with us. Um, especially I, I, since we're doing this as a video cast, respond in a video uh, and we'll we'll watch it together. Yes. Respond. YouTube has that uh, function. That's right. Use it. That's right. Show us your pretty smile. If it's pretty enough, I'll give you a dollar. I won't actually give you a dollar. I'll just kind of show a dollar on screen. Anyway. I won't actually show a real dollar on screen. It'll probably just be a photocopy of a dollar. I'm not actually even going to do that. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say, hey, here's a dollar, and you'll have to guess where it is. I may not even mention the dollar. You know what? Just just show me your tits. I'll be happy. Oh, oh. wait. Did I say that out loud? Yes! <laughs> what? We're allowed to say that on YouTube, right? I, 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 I. Do you know how long it's been since I've done that? I have, I have not done that in, in at least a year. Okay. Now that I've thoroughly embarrassed my sister. Contact us through our website at jacklobesfire.com. <laughs> Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. <laughs> oh. I love my brother. You I almost you. you really have to in order to put up with me. It's true. Folks, I don't know about you, but I've had a blast doing this as a video chat. Uh, if you like it, let us know. We may do these more regularly in the future. Um, I don't think we're going to do them every week, but hey, no. you never know. You never know. We'll see. So, let us know what you think. Yes, let us know. So, Because we need your feedback to know what's working and what's not. Uh, with that being said, the Jackalopes of Fire are going off the air. Thank you for listening. Do you have anything else to share? Um, welcome Spain. We have a Spanish list. Listener, I noticed this past week. Oh. So, welcome Spain. Donde esta el baño? I said that's all I know in Spanish. Oh, that and uh, dos cervezas, por favor. Adios. What's that mean? Sayonara. Oh, oh, okay. It means hello. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's it for us, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. For those of you that are watching the vidcast, and we will see you next time.